Do super insulated houses rot out? I mean, that's what I get told, but I've been living in one for the last five years and I'm gonna prove it doesn't rot out in this video. Well, I get a kick out of it. Every time I get into a conversation with somebody who thinks they're a building scientist and they have all these letters after their name, and they, they always tell me that the assembly that I built is gonna rot out. It hasn't. I was told when I first built this home that my house was gonna rot out in the first six months. Then the six months marks pass and, and everybody tells me one year. Well, then that passes. Oh, everybody tells me two years. You know, you know what? The house is not gonna rot out. I'm gonna remove the speaker. We're gonna remove the insulation. I'm gonna get a, make a mess in here and I'll show you the exterior sheathing. All right, let's get to it. My air barrier is on the exterior. I have no air barrier on the interior. As you can tell, I have no like Intello Plus or any membrane. The cellulose actually has uh, hydroscopic properties, which means that the moisture is constantly trying to equalize inside the cellulose itself. So I don't have moisture problems in these walls. I've actually had my friend Bill Hallstrunk, uh, who's been uh, studying this stuff for decades, uh, come out in past years and he has probed these walls and no moisture problems. So here's the cavity. It's all filled with cellulose. This is the exterior 2x6 load bearing stud wall. Here's the interior 2x4. This is half inch CDX plywood and I actually have Grace brand ice and water shield on the outside of this. So this plane is my air barrier and that Grace ice and water is actually a vapor barrier on the outside of my stud wall. So this is the condensing surface. Here you go guys. Is that rotted? I don't think so. I don't think that's rotted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is the stud w rotted? No. How about this side? No. <laughs> Go figure. All right. The studs aren't rotted. <laughs> the exterior plywood's not rotted. And I have the worst case scenario here. I'm doing this in March, which is when that sheathing should be at its wettest from the whole winter. Moisture should have just been accumulating on there like crazy. That's what I've been told by people with lots of letters after their name. <laughs> but hey, it's not. And this is on the north side of the building, which is worst case scenario. So hey, if you're thinking about building an energy efficient home, the most cost effective way to do it is a double stud wall filled with dense packed cellulose. It's way, way more cost effective than exterior foam board or, or SIPs or ICFs or any of the other crazy stuff. Anybody can do this, but you gotta make sure that the exterior plane is 100% airtight. And I did that, okay? My house tested out at 0 0.09 ACH or air changes per hour. It is a very tight house. And you have to do that so that you don't give warm moist air from inside the home a pathway to reach that condensing surface. That's what we've done. But you don't need an interior air barrier if you have a really good exterior air barrier. Just one air barrier people. Keep it simple. <laughs> and you don't need a vapor barrier on the inside. I don't have one. It works terrific. <laughs> so <laughs> just don't get scared off by the... <laughs> by the big companies selling foam products. Okay, this works. Dense pack cellulose, it has a load of benefits beyond foam. I love it. <laughs> now, if you have a different experience or you know you have another uh, wall assembly that you think is more cost effective than double stud, <laughs> 
please leave a comment below and let me know. All right, thank you everybody. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. Awesome.